listeners out there here who have been joining us here at the PSA TV. Welcome this morning, I'm Avalon Williams. Today we're gonna recap on the 1990 coup, which is the anniversary that's coming up, which is July 27th. He's no stranger to us, he's no stranger to anyone. And welcome him back in studio with us this morning is the leader of the Jamaat al-Muslimin, Yasin Abu Bakr. Good morning, Mr. Bakr, how are you? Very good morning to you and all our loyal listeners and the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Very good morning. Welcome back in studio with Thank us. Thank you very much. Thank you very I know much. we, today, you know, a lot of people have asked you to come back where we just recap again on the 1990 coup. I know your anniversary is approaching July Saturday, 27th. Saturday, yes, on Saturday. Yeah. Yep. For someone, Mr. Bakker, who is not aware of the 1990 coup, how would you explain the 1990 coup to that individual? What could you say that happened? Well, it is a series of incidents that led up to the final um, July 1990. Mm -hmm. um, it, it began really with the, the, the land dispute at number one Mukarapu Road. Mm -hmm. The government gave that piece of swamp to the Muslim community and um, we were there since 1969. I think I, I showed you the cornerstone yes. that was laid by the PNM government mm -hmm. at the time. And um, we came there towards the end of 1969. I had just left the police service, 1968, and a friend of mine introduced me to Islam. And I went to this number one Mukharap road and I met uh, um, an Egyptian, um, Dr. Salam. And we spoke um, about Islam, and I asked some questions, and he gave me some very interesting answers. And at that time, I knew nobody of African descent who was a Muslim. So maybe I can safely say that all the other African Muslims came from this tree. Yeah. Um, I read up on some of the information that he gave me and I subsequently um, I, my friend who introduced me to him, M.K. Hussein, told me that Dr. Salam was leaving to go back to Egypt and he wanted to see me before he leave to go back to Egypt. And I went, I met with him and we had a cordial discussion and uh, he convinced me of many of the things that I wanted to know, and I became a Muslim then towards the end of 1969. Um, I migrated to Canada, and um, there was an incident that occurred at Sir George William University in Canada, mm -hmm. and that uh, brought me back home. And um, after some um, altercations with the, the, the with the people and the law and everything else. Uh, I went back to Canada and then I came back, subsequently I came back and we founded this Jamaat al Muslimin at number one Mukarapu Road um, because the people who were there, they left. Mm -hmm. And we were left there with a shack and a piece of swamp. Um, Nello Sweet, uh, who was an uh, island skull winner, got make peace with his soul. One of the good, good people that I know in Trinidad and Tobago, I knew. He, um, he was building the stadium in Lavantil, so they had to dig out this quarry. My wife at that time, Anissa Wacker, was the deputy general manager of IDC, the Industrial Development Corporation. And she thought that the Lavantil people could benefit, Lavantil people could benefit if the desperados uh, would get some trucks to move the fill. Mm -hmm. And she arranged with the IDC and they got the trucks to move the fill. And then instead of going down to Silats on the dump, they, they came to our headquarters, which is number one Mukarapu Road and drop the fill. And so we transformed the swamp in, in from just a piece of swamp that nobody wanted into a very valuable piece of real estate. Um, West Mall did not exist at the time. Mm -hmm. And that Western community wanted this piece of land to establish the West Mall that exists now. 
and um, well, a struggle ensued um, for the, 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 this piece of property, right? And it went from one stage to the next stage to the next stage and then um, finally the construction of the mosque and then I got arrested and was jailed for 21 days for contempt of court and and we went from one level of, of, of confrontation with the authorities for this over this piece of property and thing. And one level to the next to the next. And, it, and until the, um, they, they began to harass us on Fridays, which is our day of worship. Mm -hmm. The police uh, would run into the mosque every Friday and disrupt the prayers and they would arrest people and things like that. At that time, I myself, I lived, you know, at, at number one Mkwapo Road. And they would rip off my children, pampers and search safe for guns. And it was, it was like hell on earth for us, you know, because they wanted this piece of land. Like I say, um, where Westmore is now did not exist at the time. They, this was where they had their eyes on for Westmore. Yeah? And finally, um, we, 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 we are fast tracking now, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we come up to um, pre-1990, yeah? And a young lady came to me with her mother and her husband, who's still alive, her mother and her husband are still alive. And I lived on the mosque at that time, on the compound, and she told me that um, she was a police officer, her name Bernadette James, and she worked in the narco section in Piaco. And she saw these, uh, the Minister of National Security, the Attorney General, uh, the advisor to the Minister of National Security, and a Major Thompson from the Army. Mm -hmm in the VIP room with all this cocaine on the she of course had access to the VIP room. Mm -hmm. She wanted to use the bathroom and she bumped into these people in the pain with these diplomatic pouches with all this cocaine, all hell break loose for her. And it went from one stage to the next stage where they transferred her, all kinds of she tried everybody, starting with the Commissioner of Police, Jules Bernard, to address this matter, and nobody would address this matter because, of course, this is the Attorney General, the Minister of National Security, the advisor to the Minister of National Security, and a Major Thompson, as he was at the time. Uh, they subsequently promoted him to a colonel in the Army, and he died at a very young age, 47 years, you know. Um, we pay for what we do, you know, in this life, you know, and of course we have to answer in the next life. Um, this, this, this meeting with her um, brought a new kind of experience to us because we were actively involved in the eradication of the drug scourge in the, in the community, especially in what we call the ghetto, and we'll get back to that. Mm -hmm. We'll make a note of the ghetto, we'll get back to that, yeah? And we, um, from Cedras down to Karanais to Marava, we were cleaning up the place. Um, I want to say this morning that if you really want to succeed in this uh, eradication of this scourge, uh, you have to start at the very top because, you know, the, the fish rottens first from the head, yeah? And all fishmen, fishermen know that. That's why they turn the gill up to see if the fish is rotten, right? Mm -hmm. And also, um, we had the active participation at the time of the police, some of the police. We had also opposition from some of the police because some of the police officers were protecting some of the blocks. And then we had a, a senior police officer, I think he was a senior superintendent, I think his name was Grant, yeah, from Tobago. Big, strong Grant. And he asked for a meeting one day with me, and we had this meeting, a very good cordial meeting, and we agreed in principle that, look, 
the police were having these shootouts with some people who had warrants and things like that. So he suggested that he would give me a copy of the people who were wanted by the police uh, for different offenses or uh, alleged different offenses, right? And uh, I would bring them in to the, to the court and that he would ensure that if it was not serious offenses that they would be put on bail. Therefore, they, when the police go looking for them, there would be no confrontation. So um, we, we did a pilot project and it worked very, very well. He gave me the list and all the people I know because we were on the street, we were controlling the streets. All the people who we knew on the streets who names were on the list, we arranged, we took them into the police. And he, he, like I say, where there was not really serious, serious offenses, he instructed the police that they do not object to bail. So that means the men were outside now and they did not have to confront the police or run away from the police because they were not on bail and they were attending court. I myself tried to make an effort to remind them of the court dates and things so they were attending courts and things like that and that worked very well. Um, well, uh, God bless Mr. Grant, I, I think he died now, but um, the, the, the present police service could learn a lot from this, this, this um, experiment that they had that worked very, very, very well. Yeah? Um, with, of course, the cooperation with us and with the police. Now, it's, it's a whole different thing, you know, the, um, we will come to this whole question of the gangs a little later on, yeah? But this led up to this Bernadette James report. And there was an incident before um, where a police officer, Savri, was killed on sea, right? And policemen were subsequently um, charged and they were suspended, I think, for this matter, yeah? So it was not the first time that a policeman was allegedly killed by police officers themselves in this drug situation. Of course, we being active participants in the community and cleaner, we had some idea about what was happening. And then when this incident came up with Bernadette James, she said that they, they planned to kill her. And her mother said, look, let us talk to Abu Bakr. He's the only person who will stand up for us and talk for people. Mm -hmm. So they came to me and uh, she was very, very nervous and um, her hands was wet. I asked one of the older brothers to go and bring them some water and she sat down and we began a conversation. And then we say, since this conversation was so sensitive, why don't we uh, ask your permission to tape this conversation? And she agreed. Mm -hmm. So we had this conversation taped. Um, it, it was very important later on because four days later, and, and you know, in retrospect, I, I think, what could I have done different, you know? Because mm -hmm. she said a friend of hers in the special branch informed her that they were planning to kill her. Mm -hmm. Of course, they transferred her out to the airport and had her doing ordinary duties and things like that, and she tried everybody. In, in her effort and her desperation to get some kind of justice, she, when she got this um, threat from her friend that they were planning to kill her, she tried to get through the embassy and, and they blocked her. Because she had, she had, at that time she had a seven-year-old son. He's now a big man and he was recently in a confrontation with the Prime Minister when his niece got killed in Karanaj. Yeah? I spoke to him recently and, and you know, this, this experience is still vivid in his mind. However, um, four days after this meeting, um, they had a, a, a mock battle in, in Shagaramas. And she was in a bus with a number of other people and this police officer, who it is reported, um, had the same sexual orientation with Selwyn Richardson, who was the attorney general, I think, minister. Yeah. Um, shot this girl head off in the bus, shot off her head in the bus. And 
and it was all glossed over and I was a policeman and of my 10 years I spent almost all my 10 years in the, the police barracks because my dormitory was obliquely opposite to the armory where mm -hmm. they had all the weapons. I know for sure that you don't go on mock battles with live, live ammunition. How on earth this man sitting in this bus had live ammunition in a gun to shoot this girl head off? They, nobody can explain that to me up to the day, and I know that it cannot be explained. That was a plan thing, yeah? Um, even today in these big military parades that you see, um, maybe four or five people have live ammunition. All the other soldiers and all the other the dummies they have. The, of course the governments are not going to take any chance because the easy way for a military thing is on a parade. The, all the, the president is there, the prime minister is there. And of course they would have learned lessons from in Egypt with Anwar Sadat. He was uh, an, in a military parade and one of the officers in the, well, a group of officers in the military killed him on the platform, on the, you know, and several other people. So I think people since then took their precautions and they, uh, to ensure that this type of thing don't occur, so they have blanks, right? So anybody who see this military parade where they advertise you know, all these guns and things, blanks, they are no uh, live ammunition. I hope that somebody from the Minister of National Security you know, would, would not ask about that. But, I mean, uh, you don't keep people in ignorance, yeah? yeah? So how on earth did he get this live ammunition? Sit in the back of the, sitting in the bus, at the back of this girl and blew off her head. I could not sleep for about three weeks. I, I just, just couldn't sleep. This thing haunted me because I knew what she, I knew that she had told me and that uh, she was warned that they, would, they wanted to kill her. And... Were you fearful for your life as well at that time, the fact that she had informed you? No, no, because um, nobody knew. Okay. I mean, her mother knew. Uh, subsequently, people have made videos with her mother and she has confirmed that and her husband. But nobody knew at the time that she came to visit me. I don't know, beside those two people, right? Okay. So there was no need at that time for me to be fearful of my life. However, we had a meeting and we discussed this matter and we said, um, well, my wife said to me, when I married you, I remember marrying a tiger. You not become a pussycat now because ministers kill a woman. That can happen, that is not you. And you know how women could chain up men. You, you, you know how you chain up your own um, spouse or whoever, right? So, I mean, we had a meeting and we discussed this matter. And one brother brought it to my attention. What is our duty as a Muslim? In one verse of the Quran, uh, uh, chapter 4, it's called Nisa the woman, and Nisa the woman. Mm -hmm. Um, it says that uh, men are the maintainers and the providers and the protectors of women, yeah? So, I am bound by my religious belief to protect women. I, I have no choice in this matter. I cannot choose not to be the protector because this is a job that has been assigned to me as a Muslim by God. And if I'm really a Muslim, I then, I, I am responsible for the protection of not only my own wives or children or daughters, mm -hmm. but the res resp responsible for the protection of women in general, all right? Um, so, because we, 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 at the time, you know, we had a lot of young people who were zealous and things like that, and, and felt passionately about, about, you know, about their women and things like that, we decided we were going to throw caution to the wind. And one Friday, as we usually did, we went to Woodford Square and we just let it out. We said everything that we wanted to say. We called everybody's names, mm -hmm. by names, and what happened. And then 
all hell broke loose. The state machinery was unleashed on us. Uh, you don't ever want to have that experience. Eh? Uh, and we went from one stage of this conflict to the next stage of this conflict and the next stage of the, Of course, um, by that time we had established a drug rehabilitation program. So we had about 100 people in the drug rehab program. We could feed them because one brother gave us a, um, some land that he had in Cora. And there were a number of young men who came from a, a training program in Shagaramas in agriculture and things like that. And so we had a, a live agricultural project in Quora, right, where we were able to feed these people. And also we had, um, we had from, from a, a Muslim brother um, a lot of uh, milk. It is bridal milk at the time, you know. And um, we would distribute milk in the, in, in the, the poor communities, you know, with the notorious or not so notorious green van. Mm -hmm. Some callers would, I would remember what the green jeep meant. Um, uh, people uh, um, would tell you when they saw the green jeep, you know, what it meant to those who were involved in this illicit drug trade. Yeah? Um, we went from one level of this conflict to the next level of this conflict. But it is amazing that these people, although we were calling their names, they did not bring us before the court. And this is the Attorney General, the Minister of National Security, the Advisor, Jim Rodriguez, to the Minister of National Security, and of course, uh, um, Major Thompson at the time. Mm -hmm. But he subsequently was promoted by that same um, clique of people to colonel. Yeah? They destroyed all our outreach programs because we had a lot of small outreach centers in the communities, mm -hmm. you know, where we, which formed part of the rehabilitation program, right? It was easy in, in a way, I mean, to deal with these drug people because um, once, we, once we pull in some of the people, they knew everybody. They knew who supplied who and who does. So we cut off the supply route, we cut off everything. And then they had so many cases and we did what is called ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution. Yeah. We resolved those problems among those people. And that brought from a certain sector in the society and a certain sector in the police service who wanted to just jail everybody, that brought a next level of conflict because we, instead of them going to court, they were patching up their own situation with us. We were seeing that, they, you know, they, 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 you know, they paid compensation, which is part of Islam, to those who they had wronged and things like that. It's called the blood money. And all that was part of the program. What is amazing, like I say, is that we were never brought before the court, although we were calling everybody's name, because we had a tape of the conversation with Bernadette James, deceased, God make peace with her soul, and we sent a copy of the tape, so they had a copy of the tape. Mm -hmm. So to bring us before the court, this tape would just to send them, you know, right where we wanted them to be, you know, imprisoned for the murder of this girl, right? So this, this, uh, left them only one choice, and that was to unleash on us the state machinery, which of course they did. And that went with one level to the next level until finally, one morning they just occupied the headquarters. They, they unceremoniously just came, the police and the army, and they set up camp on uh, the headquarters, number one, Mukarapo Road. They set up a camp. We went and we brought our lawyer, Mr. Ali, to find out what was the reason. And when we came before um, the, the officer who was in charge, um, Superintendent Richardson, who was also, also involved in the murder of Abdul Karim in St. James, mm -hmm. um, how, you know, when we weave this web, you know, it comes back to us and ties us up. He, the same Richardson said that they were here under badness and they did not need to give us any answer for their reason, baby. They hear on their badness and that was it. He subsequently was charged for murder at the same um, uh, superintendent Richardson who was involved also in the incident with Abdul Karim in St. James, the murder of Abdul Karim, one of our members. 
And uh, like I say, fate catches up with you sooner than later. And he himself got charged for murder. But with that, that response from the police, um, we went to the courts because of course, we are law abiding citizens. We went to the court and the court heard the, the matter and they said that uh, the police and the army were unlawfully occupying our premises. There was no order from the, from the court or anything to occupy the premises. We were paying taxes to the city council and so they should leave. The state then appealed the first decision, which is their right of course, yeah? And then we went to Justice Crane um, and Justice Crane heard the matter in the appeal court and he he made the same judgment that they should be removed, except that in this occasion, he gave them 14 days to be removed from the premises. Of course, you know, they, they did not do that. Um, and when we spoke to the Chief Justice, the Chief Justice said that the government must obey the rule of law. And this is very important. Else there will be anarchy and that we should bring a contempt order against them because there were two judgments against them and they were not obeying. We brought the contempt order against them and they refused to come to court. So every time they would just adjourn the matter and this went on for quite a while. During this time, the police and the army, they disrupted our school. We had a very bad result at that time, you know. Um, the school was doing very well. We have a special um, program in our schools, uh, which is called the Accelerated Program. And while next door to us, we have the junior sec who do not even finish the, the curriculum once. We finish three times. Mm -hmm. Anything you do three times, you must be more familiar. Yeah? So if the, if the Minister of National Security, I mean the Minister of Education want a formula, then ensure that the children complete the curriculum before they come to the SEA, right? Because we do it three times before we come to you, and that is why we beat them all the time. And that is why since 1982, they've never given us one single dime. Now, this is an indictment to every single one of the governments, starting from, from then, from 1982. None of them, even the present government, Mr. Rowley, who who says that there will be justice and who, uh, you know, uh, who Kamna Bisesa is responsible for spending an enormous millions of dollars to host, you know, a commission of inquiry. And one of the recommendations in the commission of inquiry is that they deal with us, you know, with the school and let our school be, our teachers be paid just like everybody else because we were following the curriculum of the school, right? And to date, they've never carried that out. Of course, uh, Mrs. Bissessa had her own agenda for spending all this money on the Commission of Inquiry. And uh, subsequently, they even charged me for my right. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you don't know today, I will tell you on the listening public that if you supposedly commit an offense and the police are supposed to tell you you have a right to remain silent, that is your right. And I did not go to the Commission of Inquiry and I reserved the right to remain silent. And for that they brought up, they went to the DPP to charge me. And the DPP said, no, you can't charge this man, this is right. And they brought a private charge against me. You, you could do that, the, 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 the outrageousness of Kamala Bisesa and her, uh, well, I wouldn't even call them a government, her bandits, because 17 of them were dismissed during her tenure. So obviously there couldn't be no legitimate government and yet be dismissed, including the Attorney General. Yeah? I know, um, I'm, not, I'm not too sure if you have seen the interview with Mr. Winston Dukran where he made a statement saying that um, you should be ashamed of what you did back then in 1990. How would you respond to something like that? <laughs> you know, during the ordeal of 1990, in the parliament, Dukaran was a minister in that in our government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the the arrest was made, when we arrested the government and charged him for the murder of Bernadette James, he was a member of that government, Winston mm -hmm. Dukaran. Yeah, and. After, you know, uh, the, the 
confrontation began with the shooting with the military and us and, and the police and the army and, mm -hmm. and even those who were suspended for, for this, um, um, this person, policeman, guy Savri, who was killed on sea, even those people who were suspended came back off suspension to be part of the onslaught against us mm -hmm. to ensure that they kill us and hopefully they would be reinstated. I, I remember them very well because I know the person who, who was the head of it, yeah? We, um, the confrontation went on and on and on and on. Um, and of course, in the beginning, they denied. They denied that, um, uh, that they had murdered the, the girl and they were involved in this narcos thing and everything else. But before we, we get there, that was not the only occasion of narco dealing with the NR government. We, we were approached one day by an, uh, an American uh, resident, uh, as we know him today at to be, and he said that uh, he worked with Carl McQuip, who was a supplier of the Monto uh, Hospital for many of its equipment and things like that. The Calm Equip was the name, yeah? Mm -hmm. And he said that he wanted some people to do a security job. I want you to understand how, how all this led up to the, the, the final 1990, yeah? Mm -hmm. July 27. The, um, he said he wanted some security. And we said, well, why do you want security when Mong Tope has his own security. He said, yeah, but uh, they stole my car in Mong Tope, so I don't trust the Mong Tope security. Mm -hmm. I want 12 men to check a container that is supposed to arrive Friday um, with equipment for Calm Equip. Of course, at that time, we didn't know what it was, but he told us that this was equipment, and he wanted us to do a checklist to ensure that everything that was supposed to be in the container was there, right? And he gave us a badge for Calm Equip, and we had an ordinary white shirt, and of course the men were contracted. He said he would pay, and, and we went. We went the Monday, and the Monday passed easily. Nothing happened. The Tuesday, um, Narinjan Tiwari, he was um, an assistant to the Minister of Health, mm -hmm. Emmanuel Hussein. He came to the compound of Mount Hope and said that we should remove ourselves from the compound. The minister did not want us there. And the man said the minister didn't hire us. We have been hired by Calm Equip to do this job. Uh, and this container is supposed to arrive on Friday. And uh, they refused to move the Tuesday. The next the Wednesday, the minister himself came with the police and the army, and they, they removed us from Mount Hope. Uh, in the afternoon, the man who gave us the job, he came to us uh, with his daughter and said, my name is so, 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 so. I am a drug enforcement agency officer for nine years undercover. He showed us his credential that he was in fact a DA officer. And he said there's cocaine in that container. I am sorry, but I trusted nobody to bust this container but you all. And that's why I told you that it was equipment and not cocaine. I didn't want nobody this to leak. I did not trust the police, so I wanted you to know. So he then showed us a letter from the government because we told them who employed us, Pusana and Grata, that he had to leave the country in 48 hours, which of course they carried out, right? Then I contacted a friend of mine who was a custom, a senior custom officer, and I told him, look here, this is the situation. He said, fellow, you want me to lose my job or what? You, you keep sending me on a wild goose chase. I go and break this continent, nothing, and I'm going to lose my bars. He was a senior officer, mm -hmm. custom officer, and we played for, we were good friends, right? right? So I told him, but I have the man here, the, 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 the DA officer with his credentials, who is saying that this container is loaded with cocaine. 
And he said, well, let me meet this man. So we arranged and they met and the man showed him his credential, showed him who he was, tell him who he was and how he employed us and, you know, the letter, Pusana and Vata. Uh-huh. Well, all hell broke loose because now he started putting in train to deal with this container that was supposed to come on Friday. They diverted it to Point Lisa's instead of the, the Port of Spain dock, right? When they diverted it to Point Lisa's, he subsequently, they busted the container, right? The, the police and the, uh, the, and, and the customs and found the cocaine in the container. The news, the night seminar of Panama News said that this cocaine, you know, this cocaine was not cocaine that they used on the street, but cocaine for your teeth was like cocaine, which is what they dental use. They did not deny that it was cocaine, but they say it was like cocaine. And they said that the, the container had drugs in it that had expired and they buried it. This is what the NIA government did. This is what they did under Robinson's watch, right? Right? So all that added up, all that was fisting against us, right? Um, I don't know, I told you, the, the, I, call, I call the names of the people because I can substantiate those names and what happened. Finally, um, I say, when we, um, we got information that I'm coming out to July 1990, that they were planning to um, attack us on the compound. Mm -hmm. And uh, like the government was coming to yeah, the government, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because w we complained about the disrespect of our women by the military, both the police and the army, yeah. who really sometimes don't want respect for women, yeah. I, I'm a police officer myself uh, uh, for 10 years. I can tell you uh, how policemen sometimes treat their own women and, and, and how, well, even the, the amount of abuses that are reported by the military and even the prison officers, because to turn off after a shift with dealing with criminals in a prison and, and things like that, to just turn off, you go home and you're frustrated and, and then you're affected by the rabies or whatever is in, 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 the, in the jail. And, and, and the amount of violence by prison officers to their wives and things like that is amazing mm -hmm. because they can't automatically turn off, you know. And so uh, then there is need for, for, you know, support systems for the prison for the police, for the army, support systems to help these people in anger management and, and how, they, how they deal with their own family issues when they leave their jobs, yeah? So to minimize, not totally eradicate, but at least to minimize, you know, the incidents of abuse, physical abuse against their families, right? I'm speaking from my own knowledge and experience. I am married, I have four wives, I swear by God that I can die at this very moment if I tell you a lie. I have never verbally, physically or otherwise abused any of my wives. Never have I hit. And for you to have four wives and not get in a conflict where you abuse physically, verbally or otherwise, you got to be a superman. And I am not superman. And uh, all who think that they could solve that problem by Spider-Man, well, he get tied up in the web. And they could solve this problem by Batman, they beat off the bee of a Batman chest. And Superman, well, he outer it too, because, you know, there are no Superman. So, Guy Gifford who think he is Spider-Man or Superman or Batman, and he, he, he will get the bee beat off a Batman chest, just like everybody, all his predecessors, including Randall Burroughs, who think that they could just you know, exterminate people and that God is not looking at them. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to answer to anybody. They have to answer only to themselves, to the political directorate, who has to answer to somebody else. Mm -hmm. You see, it's a whole chain. I, I am not digressing too far, but it's a whole chain. The, the constable is loyal. The constable is loyal to the corporal, the corporal to the sergeant, sergeant to the inspector, and you go right up to the commissioner. The commissioner is loyal to the Minister of National Security. The Minister of National Security to the Prime Minister, and the Prime Minister loyal to somebody in Westmoreland, some financer. 
So at the end of the day, the police really is loyal to somebody in West Marine or somebody else who is a financer to the party. And they don't want to believe that. They say, no, I know, no, I, I'm a police officer. I know. No, no, man, every one of you, you're loyal to somebody, some political financer you're loyal to. It just comes all the way down, you know, stream, down stream, and that is how it comes to them at the last level. And the police service just call it, you get the shitty end of the stick, yeah? The last part of it. And... The police are culpable sometimes, but sometimes, you know, myself and my own experience, you sympathize with the police officer because they find themselves in a situation where they're acting against their oath. I swear, you know, to, to, to deal with my duties without favor or affection, without malice or ill will. And there's so much malice these days by the police and so much ill will against the people the people who are, 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 are who are they themselves they break the oath because they want to they want to be promoted by the political directorate and anybody who is perceived to be an enemy of the political directorate if they bring you down the political directorate will 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 promote them like the case of Ford who is now some assistant commissioner he's a disaster he framed me up and gave me a case for a conspiracy to murder and run and hide when the evidence came out this and got Gary Griffith is saying that this is one of his best policemen. Shame on you, Gary. And as far as you're concerned, Mr. Ford, you know the disaster that you brought in this case. You, we could just go back on the records and see that you should not even be in the police service. You and Wayne Dick after that. The, the president said that you, you, Mr. Wayne Dick, should, your evidence should never be accepted in a court of law. And Wayne Dick was immediately transferred to the Mounted Branch from Heather Homicide. And you were the man who charged me under Wayne Dick. And poor Vernick, who was a decent officer, for, all you force him to lie. And Vernick, you're going to pay. You're going to pay for lying. Sorry for interrupting, but I just want to read a comment here. Someone is asking. I'm coming back to Dukaran. Yeah. yeah well, what is go asking? ahead. You can go ahead. With well, Dukaran. when 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 the scenario is set up, mm -hmm. we will take all the questions. Yes. I'm not any questions they want to ask. We come into Dukaran, who was a member of the government at the time. Yes. When we found out three weeks before, uh, because we had this problem, we reported this matter. You know, um, one of our men was shot in his ankle by a police, right? We went to St. James Police Station and, uh, and uh, the officer in charge at the time, he said, Imam, listen, I know that we are lawfully here, you know, but we have to obey the politician minister national security. Mm -hmm. What I could do is I could change the shift. And he did that. He did change the shift that they had to try to minimize the conflict that we were having with the disrespect of all women. Mm -hmm. That is sacrilege. You cannot disrespect Muslim women. You, you, you write in your sentence when you do that. They're under no circumstance. You cannot do that. You, you, you could get away with anything else, but you can't get away with disrespecting our women. Not in Trinidad, not in nowhere in the world. As long as a Muslim exists in his heart, he knows that his duty is to protect women and he will answer to his Lord when he dies. He will protect his women and, and we will protect our women at our death. Right? So when we made this complaint, he transferred the, the shift and he changed them. And then we went to the army who was involved at the time. We spoke to Vidal. He was, I think, a colonel or something. And he also changed the shift. He also agreed that they were unlawfully occupying the premises, but they had to obey the political directorate. Uh, but he changed the shift, right? To try and minimize the disrespect that they had for the conflict. All these things were building up, building up. And then finally, so we began taking our precautions against, you know, the eventualities of, the, of, non, uh, of aggression against us. And we found out three weeks before that they were planning to come on the compound. And they were going to destroy everything that we had. The grocery, the boutique, the garment factory, the medical clinic, the dental clinic. We had two doctors who would come twice a week and look after people. Anybody, you could just walk off the street, Dr. Wahid Ali, who was the acting president, president at what time, and Dr. Antoine. And then all dental work were done free by um, Dr. McKen, right? He is a Jamaican, but he worked at that time in Jamaica. And simple things like an extraction or a filling, nothing complicated, but simple things, uh, Dr. McKen would do that for us for free. And the other medical service were also for free. 
At that time, I worked with the World Islamic Health Society, and we would bring medicines into this country, hospital beds. We would bring all kinds of medicine because that would be my vote. I would, would make you know, uh, my own proposals against other people, and I would get my vote for what I wanted here. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And so over a period of time, we brought in medicines into this country. And prior to this, the NR seized our com uh, uh, one of our containers with all our medication. Oh, Robinson would have lost his eyesight with glaucoma had they not had we did they not go on to our own container and take medicine to save his blindness during the time of the siege. After the fourth day, they agreed that look, we don't all always ha all have to die here. Selwyn Richardson said that we know our way out of this conflict. There is a provision in the Constitution. It's 87-1, right? And write that down, write that down. The people of Trinidad and Tobago ought to know this is very, very important, right? We did not know that this exists at the time, right? But Selwyn Richardson knew because it was put there by Privat, who was acting on one occasion that I think the Prime Minister was the way. And he said, what if somebody come and stick up this parliament? What are we going to do? And they said, that can't happen in Trinidad. Nobody in Trinidad. Of course, we are all dummies as far as they're concerned, right? That can't happen. Nobody can come in here. He said, but it could happen, right? So he put in this 87 one. It says that the president can give a pardon to anyone before or after their charge. Mm -hmm. So they have this provision in the constitution all the time. And their friends in the higher echelons of the society, whenever you charge your children, they just call the president, the president call the commissioner and police and say, you know, this man that you charge for so, so, so this violation, I give him a pardon. And he walks free. And that's why you go to the court even today and you see only one sector of the community in the courthouse yeah. and a sprinkling of our next community. But you don't see the West Marion crew and the other crews. You don't see them in the court. How they don't end up in the court? They're not saints. They're not angels. They can't live without committing a sins and offenses and things like that. They, I mean, on one occasion, uh, they, they, uh, um, well, somebody who has just made some head or some ball, so wife was driving, what thing would, they, and almost tried to make the woman lose her job. But that is how powerful they think they are. Well, in the eyes of men, yeah, not in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. So, this 87 one said that they could grant a pardon to anyone who was charged. They said, okay, they agreed and things like that, so we could bring an end. Now, in the British law, in which we, we subscribe to, you could find nothing. The genesis of this thing is the great jurist Alexander Hamilton in America, during the Civil War, he, he, he introduced this law, Alexander Hamilton, and he was one of the greatest of the Jewish in America. To stop the, 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 after the, after the Civil War, of course, uh, the, 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 the Confederates lost the Civil War. And of course, we did the property and they were put in jail and things like that. But it, it was, the, the whole purpose was to unite America, to make the United States of America, not the North and the South, the Confederates and the Yankees or the Blue Coats, right? So in order to do that, he had to pardon the Confederates, all the Confederates, and give them back their land and things like that. And that is what the genesis of this 87 was about, Alexander Hamilton, right? And so, they incorporated that into our constitution to protect them. And they was using it all the time. They use it up to now. After 1990, they said it must never happen again, so they will remove it. Remove what? Up to now, and they can, because they're still calling, the president could still call and say, let go my child. My child lives in the West Marine. My child is with this man. And they let them go free. Even if they charge them, they let them go free, free, right? Why haven't they removed it? Because suppose somebody stick them up again, what happened now? Yeah. The, the Constitution 87 one is still there and it is known. Mm -hmm. So somebody could be the beneficiary of it, right? But they had to leave it there to protect them and they, the people because whenever they get charged, they just call the police. Let the commissioner, let Guy Gifford call me and tell me that that do exist. Call him to the station, call him and say that 87 one do exist and the president. So this is a very ungrateful society because during the conflict, when they agreed to this 87 one, Robinson himself broadcast by um, Tony Fraser, who is one of the better journalists in Trinidad and Tobago, and he read out the amnesty to the BBC 
Tony Fraser was working at that time with the BJP and he read it out his own words. So the amnesty did exist. Uh huh. After all the preparation and things like that, we had a little stick in because the, way, the stick in was I was at TTT House and Bilal was at the Red House where the amnesty was. Right. Nolly Clark, brave all the gunfire, they asked Pantin, he declined. Nolly Clark, brave all the gunfire and went. He got the, the amnesty draft from uh, Emmanuel Carter, who was the acting president. He took it to the Red House, had it signed, they signed it up, everything like that. Then he brought it to me at TTT to have it all through the gunfire, all this time, this gunfire, eh? mm -hmm. and brought it to TTT and have it verified and, and agreed to me, right? And took it back. And today they never ever recognized Nolly Clark, you know, and what his heroic deed more than anybody else as an individual outside of the whole scenario. Uh, Canon Nolly Clark of the Anglican Church. Yeah? After they have never given him is just Jew, and he is really the star outside of this real star. So, well, you know who they are, right? Mm -hmm. So, th that that amnesty was objected to by by um, Kelvin Ramnath. because when Selwyn Ryan was writing and when Selwyn Richardson was writing it down. He put 87.4 in order to deceive us, right? So that it would not work when we got to, got to the court. And then Keldren, I'm going to tell him, oh, you're writing the wrong thing. It is 87.1 and make him scratch it off and put 87.1. Mm -hmm. So it was the right document, if you understand what I'm saying, right? So it brought an end to the scenario and we agreed. Now here I come into Winston Dukaran now, right? We agreed that there should be um, an interim uh, prime minister for 90 days and then new election. That is the agreement that was made, you know, as part of the amnesty document, right? That there would be a fresh new election in 19 days and there would be an interim prime minister. Mm -hmm. There was haggling about who the prime minister should be. And I said, I, I appoint, I, Yassin Abu Bakr, the leader of Jamaat al Muslimin, the commander in chief of my army, I say I appointed Winston Dukaran, and everybody else, uh, uh, well, reluctantly, some people, you know, reluctantly agreed. Mm -hmm. Because they say, well, they have other people, and, you know, there's this Indian thing, but I'm out of that. You know, where the race is concerned, that's for the Olympics. Why, why uh, did you appoint Winston Dukaran at that time? At that time, well, of course, the racial thing don't apply where we are concerned. If you know the composition of my family, you know we passed that bridge a long time, you know. And um, Winston Dukran at that time had a face of, of um, neutrality. He was not, I mean, on this side or that side. Mm -hmm. He wasn't one of the people who we perceive or I perceive to be a racist or nothing like that. So I decided, look, of all the other people, I, I chose Winston Dukaran. And finally, that was agreed. So we let out Winston Dukaran. Mm -hmm. uh, you, Mr. Dukaran, shame on you, man. We let out du Mr. Dukaran to go and negotiate with the people in Camp Pogden about the settlement and about us, you know, how we were going to come out of the thing. Mm -hmm. There was a little sticking agreement, right? And that sticking agreement, he said we surrender. They were liars, they are not surrender. Whenever you surrender, you lay down your arms. Any, anywhere in the world where there's a truce and people surrender, they lay down their arms. I insisted that uh, this is not no surrender and I'm not going to put on my arm. And if you look at any, go back and look at the clip, you mm -hmm. will see I came out with my gun in my hand. Yeah. And my men took, so that was a sticking point, you know. Uh, Bilal agreed there and they were they, they, they anxious to come out of the parliament and I said, I'm not coming out without, without my gun because I don't trust them. Mm -hmm. So when I come out and then we had the next problem too because now we're going to do the clash of leaderships, right? How we perceive a leader to be and how they perceive their leader to be, right? We, I, I had the final say, of course, I'm the commander in chief of the army, so I had the final say. So I said, you know, we, this is not a surrender. So if we lay down our arms, then that would be a surrender. So I coming out with my gun. Mm -hmm. Then they say, you, you know, take out the magazine out the gun. I say a magazine out without a gun is a, is a piece of iron. Why do a piece of iron in my hand? This doesn't make sense. Right. So you would see my gun had the magazine in it. 
right? You also see the first person to come out at TTT was me. No, that, that caused a big problem among my own men. They were saying, no, you was the last person to come out. Let them kill everybody first before they killed you, right? So they objected, vehemently objected to me coming out. But I am the commander in chief of this army and I came out first. Well, of course, with the reluctance here, I have a lot of men, but I am the, I am the commander, right? When you I, were walking out of TTT, though, what was going but, to be in my way? Fair well, I had my time. gun in my hand. You, you go and look at it. You see, I came out here with my gun in my hand. Right. You don't, you don't surrender with your gun in your hand. How are you going to surrender with your gun? You lay down your arms and you surrender. So, Mr. Dukaran, you, like all the others, just trying to save face. But I'm going to come to you. I'm finished with you, Mr. Dukaran. I'm finished with you yet, right? So, when, when this ticking point, now look at this is, you know, there's some people who have glorified Robinson leadership in the Red House where he said fire with full force. This man is a wicked, evil man. Because you found yourself in difficulty with your government, you told the military to kill everybody, fire with full force, just kill everybody. Mm -hmm. What kind of madness is that? Right? What, that is a leader. You should be protecting your men to the end. I came out first. So con compare my, my leadership and Robinson leadership. And then, uh, let me take you fast track and I'll come back, right? To the, when we were let out of prison, right? The, uh, when, when the Privy Council pronounced that uh, on a habeas corpus, there's no appeal in Trinidad and Tobago. So mm -hmm. they could not appeal. Habeas corpus do not have an appeal, right? So we were let out on a habeas corpus, right? When we were let out, instead of us going free, they, they put us back in jail. I was at Frederick Street Jail, me and three others, and they put us back in the jail. When I came to the, uh, back to the jail, right, because people like, like De La Bastide and others, mm -hmm. you know, the old colonial masters, say they feel they're still ruling us, you know, and, and the masters, they, they, they didn't want to obey the masters in England. So they say, put them back in jail, and they put us back in jail. When I reached back to the prison, the, our cells were locked by, by um, Mr. Michael Kelly's, right? A very, very, God make peace with us, a decent, decent man. He was also a lawyer, mm -hmm. right? And so he knew the law and he knew that we should not be back in the jail, so he locked the cells. He said, if I put you back in that cell, I would be committing an act against the Privy Council. I can't put you, but you're a free man, mm -hmm. so go out of the jail. Now, go back and look at the clip and you will see thousands of people, my wives, my children, everybody outside waiting for me to come out of the jail. They left the door open and say, go out. And I said, what about my men? I'm, I'm comparing leaderships with Robinson and myself, or any of these so-called leaderships, the leaders what they have, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to talk a little bit about leadership when we come back, right? So we go, we, 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 um, I had an opportunity to come out, go and sleep with my wives when my men are locked up in Tetron because Mr. Hercules told me that, you know, you have a hundred and something men down in Tetron, right? And I need to arrange buses and things to take them out. That can't be done at this hour of the day in the afternoon. So I need until tomorrow morning to mobilize the buses and things like that. They are under my care still because it's prison. Mm -hmm. And then, but you go home, look, the people outside calling for you, your wife and them calling you, shouting my name. Hey, Ma'am, come out, come out, because the gate is open. We're right. not in the cell. Mm -hmm. We're outside in the lobby, the reception area. And the door is open, so the commissioner saying, go out. I say, I am the commanding chief of this army. I am not going out of this prison until my men are all out. And well, you know, after all this uh, to and and fro in and to and and fro in, they said, well, let him stay. If that's what he wanted to do, then, but he can't go in the cell. So they took out all our belongings, all the cell, and put it outside and said, go to the jail, right? What happened uh, subsequent to that is that uh, they said, you know, since we were going to overnight, they told the people in the kitchen, cook some food for us, whatever you want. And they did comply. They mm -hmm. make mackerel and bro uh, coconut bake, I remember, vividly, mm -hmm. you know, eating up some mackerel and some coconut bake and thing. And they made tea and we, we stayed overnight. I was not leaving that prison unless my men come out. I say, I stay in here until my men. 
The following day, of course, this time all, all people camp all night. Go and look at this clip. You see people camp all night waiting for me to come out, including my wives and my children. And I hear in their voices because you could hear them from outside. Imam, hey, come out, come out. The gate is open. I could walk out the gate. Mm -hmm. I say, I'm not coming out until my men come out, right? So finally, the next morning, um, Mr. Hercules, you know, was able to arrange a transport. And when all my men were safe, at the compound, then I left the prison. Go and check the record. So when you talk about leader, well, you see, leadership, it had to be a leader, first of all, it require one thing, and that is people must follow you. Mm -hmm. People could follow you for two reasons. Either you manipulate them, you, you, you know, like you work in here and they hold a big stick over your hair and tell you, listen, you're only going to get promoted if you do so, 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 so. So you comply and you follow the leadership or the, the directorate mm -hmm. of the leadership because they have a big stick, somebody threatening you, they're manipulating you into disobedience. Or you could, in my case, you could inspire people, people follow you, you know, inspire people by your own life. You must say, that is a real leader. Mm -hmm. When you can inspire, there's only there are two kinds of leadership. Those who uh, inspire people and those who manipulate people into this, this to follow in them. You know, if you do that, you're going to do this and then. These young men, these uh, were not uh, offered no money. We didn't go to the bank. We didn't rob a bank. We had a principle for 1990 and we lived up to the principle and to the obedience of Allah to protect women. They're still killing women. They killed a woman in Samoa yesterday. Now, up to this point, my wife asked me, so, so when are you going to stop this? Because she know my, my, it's mandatory upon me that the, we must stop the killing of these women. I don't understand. They killed some, a woman in, in Santa Cruz uh, this, um, and, uh, last week. Last week mm -hmm. And I know Liti very well. I, mean, I know a little girl. I know some little boy. I know them. I, I mean, I know he's a notorious drug dealer. I know that about him. But the woman who is married to, I know a little girl, and I, and, and I can't imagine men killing women, you know. And, but all of that has stopped after 1990, you know. Men dare not do that. Because we, even up to now, in the Jamaat and Muslimin, there exists, if you will treat even your wife, you're going to get strokes. Because you're going to be put before a tribunal, mm -hmm. and if you are found guilty of of, of uh, us beating your wife or any way and at all at all where you are wrong and you are the, you're going to get strokes now, 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 now. So that has been maintained in the Jamaat. That is a law, that is a rule. It is sacrilege. The way, you kill a woman, women is the cradle of civilization. Yeah. Uh, without women, we would all be junks. We, we would be nothing. Every great man was in a woman's stomach at some time. And, and we don't even, we don't, in this society, we don't even appreciate the old people who sacrificed so much for us to get the education they get, who made all these sacrifices. This society, man, I, now back to Mr. Dukaran. I, Mr. Dukaran, I appointed you as a, a different, and when Mr. Dukaran came out, we let him out, he came out first to go and negotiate mm -hmm. the, 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 the orderly um, coming out of the parliament and everything. They began to cuss the Quran in, in, in Camp Ogden. Who tell you we will bring any coolie prime minister? You know, a worker can't make nobody no prime minister. And Bernard Pantin and they threatened to, why you don't assassinate? Assassinate me? We had bombs all over the place because I decent and detonated with a press button. I mean, we've since removed them. But they were everywhere. So any harm, we took that precaution. Any harm that had happened to us, Nobody didn't know what happened in this country. What happened in headquarters, a joke to what happened. Yeah? Because we just need, needed to press the detonator where we had them, in the sensitive places we had them, and all hell would have break loose. So when they're talking about assassinate Abu Bakr, Mr. Dukhan, makes sense now. You think, you, you think we're stupid or something or what? Yeah? If we're so stupid, how come we would mind to arrest you? and your whole parliament and your whole government that you, how come all, your, all the security that had, all the, all the uh, special, all the information that had, all the, how come all you get, to, how, how come God that all everything? That's why I said on the TV, you want to put it, you say, the government has been overthrown, mm -hmm. or God has removed you all, not me, I didn't say, I say, God has removed you all, right, from this office because of so, 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 that was my, pronouncement from the TTT and, and, and the night of death.
When we went to TTT, let the, all the people in TTT testify first. I, I had money in my pocket. I gave the security guards and I said, go home. This don't concern you. We, we met some foreigners in there and there were some children. We let them out. And we let out a lot of people who were there. We kept Jones Pimmy there because we needed him, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, we needed people to, to operate the cameras and things like that. So we kept those people that we needed. One of the people who we kept was um, Dominic Kaliposag, mm -hmm. who today hit me because Pantin offered to give us some sandwich during the siege if we let out Dominic Kaliposag. Were you ever hear that? We, we, we starve ourselves and give them all the food we had because we could fast. I just finished a three days fast, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And before 1990, we made everybody fast for three days to make sure that you were in line with your Lord, that God would accept this sacrifice. Because, of course, we, I could not, I cannot tell you now, and I couldn't tell you then, that we were sure we were going to come out alive. All we know is that what these people did was wrong. Mm -hmm. And we had a duty to correct this wrong. As regards to that, we would come out or we know anything about 87, nothing. I couldn't tell you that. As a matter of fact, I mean, if I could relive this, this, uh, this, this particular afternoon for you, um, I, I, before we left, I said, God, I am going to make these two rakats, two prayers, right? And if this is wrong, because I have all these children's lives in my hand, then when I go down in this prostration, don't let me come back up. Mm -hmm. When I made the first one, I realized I could come back up. I started to sweat because I know the danger that, that I'm going to, to be responsible for this. We had people with Braxton and they were 13, 13 and 14 years old, young men, you know, who committed their life to what was right. And I would have to answer to them on the day of judgment if they're dead. You know, fortunately, every one of my men came out of, the, uh, of this thing alive, you know. All 114 men came out alive, you know. Mm -hmm. We just call that a master general. I'm not, I'm not, let me say that because in humility, I should say God is the boss, yeah? And God was in charge. But it had nothing to do with me being this, this super general that I bring back all my men from this conflict alive. It had to do with that. Mm -hmm. It had to do with God being in charge from beginning to end. In the Quran, there's 114 chapters and there are 114 men that achieve this, this, this yep. thing, right? And in the Quran it says that O for them is 19. They divided us into groups of 19 to try us. So all, all along God was present in this thing. It had nothing to do with me. I am just Yasin Abu Bakr. But what, what the spirit that moves within me or moves within people who God want to do something, you can even understand. Sometimes you yourself say, but well, what caused me to do that? In respect, you, you know, in retrospect, you say, mm -hmm. well, why I did that? What caused me to do that? It's the spirit that moved in you that caused that. And they think that this spirit of resistance is dead. And they could just, they could just kill out everywhere. They're mad. Really, they, they're mad. First of all, let me finish with Dukaran, yeah? So, Mr. Dukaran, you're backing up the wrong tree. You, you and everybody else. So, let me let's, 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 let, 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 put down this scenario for you. It is not me who removed you, Mr. Dukaran, and your government. It was the people of Trinidad and Tobago who unceremoniously, miraculously voted you completely out. The NL had 33 seats, you know. 33 out of, out of, out of 36 seats. There were three blind mice in the PNM, Manuel, Muell, and Marshall. Mm -hmm. Everybody else lost. The NL had 33 out of, of, out of thing. So in Trinidad, they had 31 seats in Trinidad. Never in the history of Trinidad politics, no government ever lost all 31 seats. Nobody was deaf to carry the news. So who did that mean? Of course, uh, I, uh, we might have been the inspiration for the people, but it's the people who voted you out, Mr. Dukaran, mm -hmm. not me. So if, you, if you're saying that I should be ashamed, is you condemning the people who voted you out. I didn't vote you out. You were in office after you betrayed us with the amnesty. You know what happened in the amnesty? When we began to evacuate the thing, the first person to come out was Kevin Ramnath because he was an asthmatic case. So he came out first, right? Mm -hmm. And we used to, they, they, they blew in a paper bag to give him oxygen. So, so bad was his asthma, right? But on his way out, the, 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 the only decent man at the time in the parliament was John Humphrey. 
John Humphrey said, if you're going to betray these people, I do not want any part of this betrayal. So do not make this document and then go back on it. They say, no, nah, we will honor it. Uh -huh. So uh, um, uh, Humphrey insisted, John Humphrey, Mr. John, that he have a copy. He folded up his copy very small, stuck it in Kelvin Ramnath's pocket without anybody knowing when Kelvin Ramnath came out and went to the hospital. Next thing, when we came out of the hospital, they take a, out of the, the parliament and then they took all the amnesty documents and see there was no amnesty. They went back on the word liars as they are, these politicians. They should be shamed to come and ask people to vote for them. Come now, you're ashamed. Bukharan, you're ashamed. All you, all you have no shame at all, at, all, at all to ask people to come and put all you in office. So here what, what happened. Um, John Humphrey called my wife and told her, get a lawyer, go to the hospital, and you will see a copy of the amnesty in Winston Dukaran pocket. Bam, my wife got the lawyer, run up to the hospital. In Dukaran jacket pocket, we found the copy of the amnesty. That is how it come. Mm -hmm. the, what does that have to do with me? That is all the plan of God. That is how God works in and 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 so all the big bravado that they play now, God done decree what kind of happen to all you know. If all you, if all you feel this whole thing about gang and all you afraid the gangs, all you afraid no gangs. No, 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 no. You see, it have eternal truths. It's like every tree have a root. <laughs> it have eternal truths, and all rivers just flow to the sea, right? The the trade unions are not organized. Look at what different trade unions have. All they do they agree, right? The politicians who agree, look at different political parties they have. The only people who are organized is the people in the ghettos. Every block have a leader. But the, the, the only thing is that they don't realize that all rivers just flow to the sea. And any time that consciousness come among the, these people who they call in gangs, they're not no gangs. They, they, they organize the community. They organize the community. You, you want to tarnish them and put them gangs. You stick labels. All alcohol is alcohol. But you put one, one is fat 19, one is black label, one is that. You just stick in labels, there's all alcohol. So they, they, they just stick in a label on, on the community that who is able to organize themselves. But every block have a leader, you know, every block. Now, here we are. All rivers just flow to the sea. And the sea just level everything. And, and this country need to level the playing field. So anytime these rivers understand that when they go to the sea, they, you know, when the floods come, everything end up in the sea, you know. But you, you see anything jutting out, the sea does level everything, right? So once they realize that the way to level this playing field is that all these rivers must flow to the sea mm -hmm. and they identify the sea, then that is the end. The, all the oppression done, all this, all this slavery done, everything and done, everything done. And the consciousness is going to come to them, you know, because they, they, it will come. God brings the consciousness among people at every stage in, in development of people's life. So they're going to understand what is meant by all rivers flowing to the sea. And all these communities that are organized, that they call them gangs, it's just organized. They want to put a label on it and say it's a gang. You could call it where you want, the people organize the communities for themselves. I'm not, I'm not defending what they're doing. The actions are wrong in many instances, wrong, 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 mm -hmm. and I condemn it over and over and over again. But this is just a phase, you know, that they're going to come out of, you know, because they go, sooner or later they're going to realize they identify the sea. And that sea is going to unite them because all the rivers are going to flow to that sea, and then the sea is going to level everything. That's why they call it sea level. You, you mm -hmm. never hear them talk about the sea level? Yes, that's why it's called sea level. So, Mr. Dukaran, when you criticize me, you're criticizing the people of Trinidad and Tobago who voted all year out. Not mm -hmm. me. Don't criticize me. I was maybe just the catalyst that propelled the consciousness of the people to get rid of you all. But uh, don't try to criticize me. You and everybody else who try to criticize me. Stop trying to fool yourself now. If you, and you can't say it's the ghetto alone that fall for, to, voted for you. Everybody wiped all your company, all your 31 seats, and all you lost every single seat in Trinidad and Tobago, in Trinidad. Every seat you lost. So who's that? So all, I, all you could say to me is that I would have been the catalyst for the consciousness of the people to vote all your but when you try to insult me, you're insulting the people who voted you out. So just remember that finger you're pointing is pointing at the others pointing back at you. Not me. Not me. I, I am I am mm -hmm. free. I know we're pressing on time, but Yeah. I don't How far know we are now. <laughs> I want to take the question call in everybody wanna call any questions you want to ask. Uh, yeah, just, I just on the Dukaran story, right? Mm -hmm. 
And then, of course, well, I think this scenario has been painted in a way yes. that we could comprehend the, the genesis of all this, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. say, well, you know, yeah, we come up here at the anniversary, and of course, people are talking a lot of stupid. It's 29 years now, yes. and Dukaran now feel the talk, mm -hmm. you know. Why no? Why is only now we talking? I met him on social functions. I met him with his wife and um, my wife, and I met him, and we had a cordial discussion. All of a sudden, you know, who somebody make him talk and say something, you know? So, uh, I mean, I don't. Know, maybe it's it's the government. He's saying that wait now, we had 31 seats. How these people? And the 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 PNM had only three seats. So the PNM is indebted to us for ever coming back in governance. And what they did to us, they betrayed us. Up to this day, the MP has sent for the school. So the PNM themselves are, well, but all this is coming to an end, you know, and we're not far off from it, you know. We may be about a month or so off, you know, and I'm going to, I could quote the scriptures for you, tell you, that you only have about a month until the end of August that where this dispensation is going to come to an end. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. Do you yeah. think the conditions in the country is ready for a similar event? I don't know about similarity. Mm -hmm. Lightning does strike the same place twice. But I do know that this dispensation is going to come to an end mm -hmm. soon, soon, very soon. Mm -hmm. This is the end of slavery, and the reparation is going to rise, and that is when reparation is going to be paid. Mm -hmm. The reparation is going to be paid when all the rivers flow to the sea, because the sea is going to level it off, you know. Right. Nothing, nothing, the cows, the cars, the old cars, that everything they end up in the sea, it will be level, you know. The sea will level it all off, right? And forget the threats by, by, by Gary Griffith and by Short Young. Forget all these military threats. All these guns, all this is nothing. These guns are nothing because these guns cannot stop the sun from setting in the evening. All the nuclear weapons in the world, if you put them all together, when the sun is going to set in the evening, that sun is going to set and you, nuclear weapons cannot stop the sun from setting. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And so whatever God has decreed is what is going to happen. And this, this God has decreed that slavery will come to an end now and that they will, the reparation will be paid. You know who make me work for 400 years and then pay me? And then they're talking about Guy Griffith, talking about some gangs over three years get one point something million dollars. The overpass in, in I think it's 300 million. The, the Calco, the uh, family of Ruan Sinanan that they give Calco to do the highway up in thing is 400 million. So, so them is not, them is gangs, that is super gangs. Them is not ordinary gangs. So they come on millions, you talk about, you talk about some people, you yeah, have box drain today and they're fighting. And then, so he don't want them, to, they must not eat. No job, no job for them. So when you don't have no job, listen, in slavery, you, you, you didn't have no unemployment in slavery, you know, because if you didn't work, they will kill you, you know. They will beat you to death if you did not work. As soon as the emancipation came and you had to pay people, unemployment pop up because they don't want to pay people to work. So you have a set of unemployment. But all the time you couldn't be unemployed when during slavery, you were unemployed, they beat you to death, you had to work. So they don't want to pay for labor. And now, to, Guy Griffith, i sorry for you as well, it's really, I said, you think you could do the way Boros do and Boros die on his bed begging me to pray for him and ask for forgiveness for the wrong things that he did and he ended up with the government charging him Boros. So care, careful Guy Griffith, careful that you don't end up in the same jail that Pandi end up in opposite our cell with me. I and Pandi in the same cell, one opposite to the other. Careful you don't end up in the same cell. Yeah? Remember, Mr. Guy Griffith, you have been warned today that you could mm -hmm. end up in a cell. You could end up just like Boros. So be careful how you think you deal with people. You cannot, nobody could kill this African race. They're the strongest people on the planet Earth. All life came from Africa. There's not an anthropologist that could deny that. So you cannot destroy these African people who, the, who has been enslaved for 400 years. No reparation, nothing at all. Who all kinds of acts has been made about them. Why, we feel you could destroy them? Come on, now you not, not. First of all, you had to pass through me, and you haven't passed through me yet. So, uh, you know, think about it. And you and everybody else, not you alone, but all the people who chain in you up like a little machine, when, when your chain run out and you stop, you will see what will happen to you. Right? Mr. Baker, do you think the event of July 27, 1992 coup has changed the culture, the people, and the security apparatus in this country? The security apparatus? It they have no security. The security is the people themselves. They have no security. Mm -hmm. 1990, they had security. They had police, army, intelligence, special branch, 
I don't know whether special branch, all branches the same in the tree. So, you know, so I don't know, where is this, uh, you know, Mako's people, Makoin people, and they call it special brand. And then they, in the Quran, it say do not spy on each other. So it's a sin, really, to have a people spying on other people, people coming into your house. I, I heard, last time I was amazed. I hear uh, Alexander ranting and raving about bulletproof vests. These, these people in China are just ignorant. Uh, listen, you cannot take my money and build a road and call it a priority bus route for you and your partners to drive on. And you telling me that I can't drive on the road that my money bill? Ah, uh, man, don't make Skylark now. You charging me for a seatbelt, for not wearing a seatbelt. And when I go to court, the magistrates will tell me the seatbelt is to protect you. So if a man has a bulletproof, Bruce, a bulletproof vest home to protect him, how the hell are you going to charge him when, when they're charging you for not protecting yourself by not wearing a seatbelt? You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or you don't understand what I'm saying? So they just, they just, uh, if you want, you could put up a, a, a toll gate on the priority bus route. And when I come to the toll gate, I pay. But you tell me I'm a taxpayer. You take my money to build a road and it's you and your partners alone to drive on the road. What's, you you making joke or what? You serious? My next question to you. Yeah. Some argue that society changed after the coup. Do you agree? And in yeah, they vote on the NAR completely, of course, and since then they'll be voting on government repeatedly. No government, there are no two terms. Did the 1990 brought any sort of positivity changes to Trinidad society? Um, among some people, yes. Among some people, the, the awareness, for one thing, the awareness, mm -hmm. right? And that, you know, things that they could have done before, they can do again, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's active resistance in the community, and you could call it gang, you could call it one. We have active resistance, you know, active resistance against, you know, slavery. Uh, Mr. Rowley, I don't interfere in all your politics, but they're setting you up, you know. They're setting you up, Mr. Rowley, they're setting mm -hmm. you up, and you're taking all the chain up. They're setting you up. Careful, Mr. Rowley, they're setting you up. Forget how much arms, forget how much gun fit. The state is nobody. The state is 41 people. There are 1.3 million people in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. There's only 41 of you. As soon as the people realize it, but wait now, it have more we than them. You know what happened? Oh, it's 41 people in the, in the government, 41, yeah? 41 seats, I think they have. How much people are in Trinidad? 1.3 million. So all the people that get our money say, but wait now, it have more we than them. That's the end. So don't talk all this bad man talk about bad man talk about killing people and stuffing all people and one shot, one kill. This it has no power like the power of love, right? None of all all this power that all your boasting, all you have, all these sub girls, everybody, you dare not go home and tell your wife you're going to marry your next woman. You can't do that. I have four wives. I, and, and this is done with the power of love. I, I don't have no gun. I don't have a gun. I don't believe in gun. Right? So don't tell me 1990 had a gun. Of course. But the men who occupy my place had guns. Mm -hmm. and, and if they had ice cream cone and pizza, I love ice cream. I'd have fight them with ice cream. But they had guns who occupy many things. So boys fought with guns. After that, you never see me with a gun. I've never, I don't believe in guns. Guns is instrumental death. And guns don't kill no people. People just kill people. Guns don't kill nobody. Does the Jamaat al muslimi still have soldiers and are they still training to assist with humanitarian aid? Yeah, we still do that. Every day we do that. Every day we, when we can. Well, uh, Saturday our celebration is going to be a feeding the poor. Mm -hmm. Basically fasting and feeding the poor. Yeah? That's how we think we could thank God, you know, that he spared our lives and, you know, he changed the society. Uh, because uh, we need to, to, to look after the poor and the oppressed and those okay. who are in need and things like that, of course. People have been um, talking about losing lives, but also you lost a valuable life. Who? Yeah, well, no, I didn't. My son was, my stepson was not in any conflict. He was in his mother home right. and the police murdered him. That murder, outright murder. Mm -hmm. But you know what was the end of the person who, who, who do the shots and who, who, who assaulted my wife and her mother? They, they, I don't want to tell you how they ended up. I don't want to tell you how they ended up. Okay. Did that occur? But the end was a disaster. Yeah. What's the, um, for the persons that lost their family members during the 1990 coup, have you ever um, considered setting up some sort of compensation funds and stuff like that? I setting up a compensation? I was not responsible for this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, Mr. Dukran, the, everybody vote them out. And you're coming back to the same question. 
how they lost the government, people voted them out, unanimously voted out everybody. The people said, we don't want this government who mm -hmm. caused this problem, right? This the government who caused the problem, this drug dealing government who murdered this policewoman. They say, we do not want that. And they voted them out. Don't put no onus on me. Put the onus on the people. It's they who got them out, not me. So everybody who claiming about who they have to pay the compensation, not me. I don't have the compensation. I was locked up in jail. Well, I was. Well, they, you forget they say no one no, I'm not sitting. They locked me up. All the people was looting and thing. I didn't loot nothing. I was in jail. Mr. Baker, do you um you think the population and the Muslims should how do you think they should approach the anniversary of the 1990 coup? Which population? I only speak for Jamaat and Muslim. Mm -hmm. I do not speak for the Muslim population in Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. because the Muslim population in Trinidad and Tobago is not a united force. We are a minority within a minority, right? So I do not speak for the other Muslims organization. I speak only for Jamaat and Muslim. Yeah? And for Jamaat and Muslim, we are strong, resolute as ever, you know? Any yeah. thoughts on, you know, a lot of Muslim gangs in Trinidad and Tobago, would you say they are true Muslims or? Muslim gangs? Yeah, but we've been I, hearing, you know, well, some say gangs. No, 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 it is oxymoronic mm -hmm. to say Muslim and gang in the same sentence. It, right. it, it, they don't work. A Muslim is not a, 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 a Muslim is a Muslim, is not a member of a gang. A Muslim is a Muslim. Somebody who is involved in, again, you coming back, you, you following the thing about gangs. The, the, you, you going by the label, the stick on it, it is all alcohol. They just call one VAT 19 day because they stick different labels on it, but it's all alcohol. Mm -hmm. And it, you, you are doing the same thing. You calling people gangs. You can't call them gangs. You are no proof. What is a gang? They say a gang. The definition of a gang is people who belong to an organization who commit offenses. In Kamna regime, she fired 17 people. Anand Ramdogan is charged before the court. He was the attorney general. He's charged before he's a member of a gang. They have party cards. The PNM is a gang. They have party cards. They have a Balize house. They have, they have registration. All of them is gangs. Mm -hmm. The people in Lavan, they don't have no registration. They don't have no, no membership card. They don't have anything. So these are bigger gangs. Except these are the gangs who have the contract for millions and the box rain gangs who get the contract for $20. That is the only difference between the gangs, but it's gangs. If the definition that they put on gang is that your members, um, thing, um, I remember Carty said, what are we You know, he was a member of parliament. So when you're talking about, uh, right now, Anand Randogan, the attorney general, is charged before the, guard for the court for a criminal offense, mm -hmm. right? So that's a gang. The CEDU and C to which he belongs is a gang. All of them is gangs. If, if the definition of gang fall in people who have organization where the members commit offenses. Can I find about 17 people see in the form of the, who commit offenses against the law? She's including the attorney general. Uh, Guy Griffin get fired too, you know. Remember Guy Griffin get fired too. So, and he was a member of, of the UNC, so he's a member of a gang too. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the way he got on, like if he got a promotion, he was, he was the attorney general, you know. The commissioner is less than the attorney, so he got a demotion, you know. So don't pick up your chest, guy. I don't want to get in no conflict with you, right? Because you know me, and I know you. And you know, to, for me and you to get in any conflict, that's the next level. So I don't want to get in no conflict with you. I don't want to get in no conflict with, no, with the police. I don't want to get in conflict with nobody. I, I on my side, and you on your side. If you transgress my rights, I'm going to respond, adequately respond. I'm not going to transgress your rights. You have a right to behave in the way you think you behave. Don't transgress my rights. Right? When you reflect, when you, when you look back at what took place during the 1990 coup, how do you feel about the situation now, when you look back at it? I, I, I think the, the government, successive governments, they learn nothing from the coup. They really know nothing. They still think that they are a uh, law unto themselves. Mm -hmm. And that they forget that they have a temporary office, you know. And that the people elected them to do a job, just to work. They could be fired in every five years, they get fired. So they have no permanency. It's not that they have any permanency. In my case, it's different. I've been the Imam of Jamaat and Muslimin for 46 years uninterrupted. All my enemies dead. All my enemies who wickedly did things to me. They're dead and gone. And they have to answer for what they do. I still leave my Jamaat and Muslim. 
I, I, I ain't changed, I ain't get voted out, I ain't get nothing. I have still been the in, uninterrupted leader of Jamaat and Muslimin for 46 years. There is so it is. So I don't have no temporary office. I don't need to bribe people to follow me. I am a natural leader. People follow me because I inspire them, you know, and that's why they follow me. I, do, I don't want to bribe them. I know I can't promise them no office. I can't promise them nothing. I promise them. If they follow me to be a leader, I say, like I tell you, people are to follow you. People follow me. Eh, that, is, that is by instinct, by, by inspiration. Mm -hmm. When, you, when you st people start following you by inspiration, then you can start solving problems. Other than that, you have to manipulate people to follow you. The politicians just manipulate people to follow them. Promise them that and promising them, promise them. All the politicians do is promises. They can't promise the land nothing, you know, because you could tell the land how nice the soil looking and how we think you know, the soil ain't going to be a nothing, you know. A dumb man could stick a, a cutlass in a thing and put two grain of corn and you get something, right? So people who just, you know, take all these promises from politicians, they're going to do that. They, the politicians even know they, if they go live to the next day, how they go promise you will happen in the next five years and they go do this and they go do that. And they don't even, they can't guarantee that they're going to live the next day. So how, how you would just lap up all these promises and you forget to look at the character of the people, you know, look at the, the character of the people who are, 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 are putting up themselves for service. Mm -hmm. Look at the track record. What have they done before? You know, it has some two by four politicians coming up now. What do they do? They think that, that people must now suddenly decide that they will put them to look after their affairs, to steal the treasury, right? Me, I have a moral high ground, you know. I could talk from a moral high ground. I, and and, and I, I could tell you today that I don't get any pension, I don't take any pension, I'm entitled, I'm a mm -hmm. patriot of this country, I fought my country, I love it more than others who didn't fight for it, right? So, but I don't take no pension from this country, I let that go to the poor. When I left the police service, they gave me a, a little pension, right? I don't even take that, that is my moral high ground, you know, so I don't want nothing from the treasury. So I will not steal any from the treasury. The people who steal from the treasury, you know, the people who drop out, you know, from school, you know. The people who drop out from school could rob a bakery or they could steal from somebody and anything. But the, person, the people with the PhDs and all these lawyers and things, they're the ones who steal from the treasury, you know. Yes. A, a dropout can't steal from the treasury. So we get tired by this doctor, this politician, doctor, this politician, doctor, this politician. And they're the ones who rip off the treasury, steal all the people's money all the time, right? But uh, somebody from the ghetto can, can steal. And, and I could tell you how to get out the ghetto, you know, write down these words. G H E T T O is ghetto, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Get higher education mm -hmm. and teach others. And you're the ghetto. Mm -hmm. Now, by higher education, I, I don't mean getting a PhD, you know. I mean higher education being the consciousness of God. Mm -hmm. That is higher education, right? Once you get, Solomon is supposed to be the, peace be upon him, the wisest man that ever lived. Solomon said, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So once these politicians have no fear for God, they're thiefing all the money from the treasury and things. What wisdom they have? They know they'll catch up with you sooner or later and God will catch up with you. you because you're stealing. When you steal from the treasury, you steal from everybody, you know, including you, you know, but you ain't here because you gain money, but when you steal from the treasury, you're stealing the gang, the people you call them gang, you're stealing their money, because it's their money in the treasury, you know. When you steal from an individual, when you steal from a money bakery, you steal from an individual, but when you steal from the treasury, you steal everybody money, and the politicians steal from the treasury, so they steal everybody money, and everybody don't feel that their money being stolen from them. I know they're stealing my money, you know. I know they're stealing my money, and one day they have to account for stealing my money, because my money in the treasury, the commanding heights of the economy is we don't make no cell phones and we don't make no cars, nothing, you know. The commanding heights of the economy comes from God, mm -hmm. which is the oil, the gas, and asphalt and things. This, this is God give that to everybody. And you charging a vagrant. A vagrant don't get no money from, from the oil, but you charging a vagrant to vat when you have to buy a soft drink or something, you charging him vat. That's ridiculous. That's murderous. That is, that, how, how you could accept? So you're charging a vagrant vat. The vagrant is homeless, he has nowhere to live. He don't get no money from the oil which belongs to him. The gas belongs to him, belongs to the vagrant. It is God gift to this earth, to every human being, and to everybody who's a train radiant. And you feel it belongs to you because you are the treasury. You, you are the key to the treasury. You, you mind or something or what? Yeah, but you, I let you know you're stealing from me. You know, one day, 
You could get locked up for stealing my money, you know. Mr. Baker, around this time of the year, a lot of um, persons. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Very fearful, and fearful I think what? in in their minds, is, it comes across as you know they're always waiting to hear. Is the Imam going to stage another coup? Is something going to take place at the Jamaat al Muslimin? You don't understand what I tell you. God is the unknown. Nobody knows what God does. No, how come they didn't know 1990 July 20 was going to happen? How, they have all the intel. How did they know that? You feel you're going to know now what's going to happen to them? You feel I could tell you what's going to happen tomorrow? I, I can't even guarantee the next moment of my life, right? I could die now, right here sitting, I could get a heart attack and die. So I can't tell you nothing. I have no knowledge of the unseen. But I could tell you that uh, historically, we're at the end of the dis dis dispensation. Mm -hmm. Historically, and I could show you in, in the scriptures, I could show you in the Bible, I could show you in the Quran. If you want, you know, the Archbishop of Trinidad, Mr. Gordon, I could show you where this dispensation comes and end. Pastor Coffee, Pastor Green Tea, Pastor Coco, Pastor Bushy, whoever it is. I could show you that this dispensation comes and end. I could show you it in the Bible, I could show you it in the Quran. I, if you want, write it down and they could check it out. You want to write it down? <laughs> Genesis 5, 5, mm -hmm. yeah, 12 to 14. Yeah, and, and the, the states will get reparation, you know. The, 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 when Moses led the Jews out of, out of Egypt, right, and, and, and Pharaoh pursued them to kill them, God drunk Pharaoh, you know, and the Jews who he enslaved for 400 years inherited everything that Pharaoh had, you know. So, and that's part of the promise of this dispensation ended, mm -hmm. is that the slave will get the reparation, you know. Not only would God punish those who enslaved them, but God will give them, they will come away with great wealth. Will they will get the wealth from those who take it from them and make them work for all these years and then pay them no money and rip them off and steal the money in the treasury? That is in the Bible. I just give you the quotation. Go and study it, Mr. Gordon. This is Genesis 12 to 14. Go and see. And it was a promise made to God by Abraham to Abraham and every promise that God made to Abraham was fulfilled and, and, and uh, I could tell you who it is if you want to discuss it at the next time we could discuss it you mm -hmm. know on a theoretical point of view you know well, so. I know you said on Saturday you're having a dinner that is in remembrance no no I said on Saturday we're going to be most people are going to be fasting and then yeah. we're going to be feeding the poor is that what you're doing remembers for the 1990s yes 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 that is part of the plan okay yeah to feed the poor and, and of course to fast and to thank God, you know, mm -hmm. by extra prayer and things like that. I, I just told you that I, I just finished my three days fast, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Everybody fasted before July 1990, everybody fasted to make sure that they were spiritually in tune with mm -hmm. what they were going to do. Mm -hmm. and, and God successfully made it happen. Yeah. And, and like I say, it's the people, you know, so Mr. Dukaran, don't tell me to be ashamed when you're insulting the people who voted all you out. Don't tell me. You should be ashamed. Because I appointed you as an Indian to be Prime Minister. I am African. I appointed to you. It had a lot of Africans in the Parliament that I could appoint. But I appointed you to be the Prime Minister. And you fail. You duck and you run. That's why they, they gave you that new nickname. They're not duck and run, but duck and run. Because you run. You let them out uh, panting and them chant you down and, and thing and run you and chase you. What kind of man you is do her? Send up by a man now. Now 29 years you're coming to talk and I understand you. Where's your problem? Where's your problem? Since, so, uh, since the previous interaction with the former minister, yeah. Prime Minister Mrs. Bissasa, yeah. have you had any sort of contact? Do you still stay in contact no, with Mr. Her? Mr. No, no, no. I have no contact with Mrs. Bissasa. And, and I've heard it in the green, green find that she's one of the people who is, who is going to be in trouble very soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so through the grapevine, I can't confirm. Right. I just say in what I hear people say. So right. that if, and they say the voice of the people is the voice of God. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, because I hear a lot of people say a lot of bad things that is not the voice of God. So when they say the voice of the people is the voice of God, I ain't sure I know what they mean. Right. Yeah. I know you mentioned at that time, you know, your assets and stuff they wanted to take from you and sell. No, 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 they, like they wrongfully stole my property. I will get it all back. The quick camera business is a thief. Mm -hmm. Anand Ramdogan is a thief. Gerald Ramdin is a thief. Um, 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 the others who fabricated the documents and changed them, they're all thieves. Listen, we were let out on a habeas corpus. You cannot, hear, you cannot appeal a habeas corpus in Trinidad and Tobago. Also, also, 
you, they tried that case behind my back. I, mm -hmm. I was always the main trainer, that, right? The, and they went behind my back and sold, sold my property. Kamala Vipa said, she's a thief and she will pay for this, for that. Just like Anand Ramlogan and Ramdeen is paying, she will pay too, and others. And, and one of the people who was opposed to the Prime Minister right now, Mr. Prime Minister, I wish I could tell you, the person who really coming at you for the thing, uh, he is part of the people who fabricated the documents, take the documents of the registry and fix it with Ram Dean. And you'll get, you get jail, you'll get jail, it come in for him, it come in for him, it come in. Uh, if you went jail them, go go jail them. You have tell him, Mr. Prime Minister, if the, your enemy is who up against you now, for this, this thing, who leading the charge against you, for this Chief Justice, they are culpable, right? And they go get jailed. I'm telling you, God go jail them because they culpable. They took records out of the registry and they changed the records and they fabricated records. They're going to get jailed. They're going to get jailed. I know we're pressing on time right now, and I know you have. Yes, other well, yeah, but I thought you say people had questions. You yeah. do the question for them. <laughs> All right. No. Okay. All Is right. there anything, Mr. Baker, you'd like to say pertaining to you know, what had transpired in 1990? But I tell you everything that transpired. That? I tell you that the politicians didn't learn no lessons. I think the people learn lessons, the people right. voted them out, right? Uh, our consciousness is among the people, because since then, no government in the last two terms, you know, the people just, you know, that is it. You come and you go and you come and you go until they get the right mix. Maybe next time around, they're going to get the right mix. But I could tell you that that right mix is going to be a new dispensation. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the old order. It's not going to be what you're accustomed to. It's not going to be the brainwashing politics. It's going to be something entirely different. That I could tell you for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. That I could, I could tell you. And I could, I could quote, I share, I will give you scriptures to support what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. It's not my word, it's the word of God. Right? And anybody, any, I, I, listen, anybody who wants to challenge me, Satmaraj, um, Pastor Coffee, Pastor Green Tea, Pastor Coco, Archbishop Gordon, anybody who wants to have a debate with me, you could just call this, uh, this, this thing and arrange it and we'll have a public debate anywhere, anytime, anyhow. On race, on anything you want to debate on, anything. This is an open challenge yeah. to anybody, any of the leaders in training at the Bego. Well, well, I don't count Kamna and them as leaders, you know, because sometimes uh, them are just misleaders, you know. And like I say, if you steal, you, you had to pay for stealing, you know, and they stole my property. Mm -hmm. They think so, temporarily they steal it. But they will get locked up for it. They will get locked up. This, the, well, the man who, who orchestrated it doesn't get locked up already, which is Anand Ramnagan. He was the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yeah. Baka, what would you say are the five good things that came out of the event of the 1990 coup? Five good things? Yeah. It didn't have five good things. Good things are rare, you know. <laughs> Even to get a husband these days are a rare thing. A good man. You won't say so? A good man? No. You won't say that a rare thing to get a good man these days? No, no, make joke. How they come to prison full with all these young people and things like that? You think something had to be wrong and leave all the women out there so that now there are no men now, so the men go on to the LBGQ. Oh, well, man, this country is in a bad state. Let me tell you something. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, and Sodom and Gomorrah did not reach the stage where we reach, you know, because people weren't openly allowed in Sodom and Gomorrah. To, to, to marry each other, you know. Mm -hmm. But here we legislating that. So we're going to be on Salomon Gamara, right in Jamaica, the God Sing Port Royal, you know, just next door to we God Sing Port. Pompeii was destroyed. And here we glorifying this homosexuality. And they mad. They, they on the brink of destruction. We're on the brink of destruction. We're right on the brink. We're going to fall off. So hold on tight, hold on to God and the word of God. Otherwise, you're going to sink. You're going to sink with Pompeii. You're going to sink. You're going to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. You're going to sink with it. Everybody's going to sink. Listen, God in the Quran, God told um, Lot to bring up the rain. You know, so Lot see when his wife turned back, you know, mm -hmm. and don't feel that he and try to coerce you. No, no, girl, don't go back there. This place could be destroyed. But you know, when you tell them that, they don't believe you know. <laughs> but you know, people, you know, uh, uh, this, this program, you could just say that is another program. This is uh, another program, you know. The people in this society have been warned by me, you know, for the last two years. I've been warning them. That is all God asked me to do, you know, warn the people. The rest he could do. He could do for himself, you know. Would you say the um, 1990 could affected the socioeconomic conditions of the society? 
If there are no socio-economic position, you have one people who have nothing at all, one group of people who have nothing at all. The Africans have nothing, absolutely nothing. And the little box rain that they can't get, no guy say, don't give them the box rain. No, I'm mine. And then I hear a, a, a television host last night lambasting Mr. Rowley. But Mr. Rowley spoke the truth about the existence of these things, you know. At every, but at every facet of the society, there are people who get money and they pay for it. SIS going with all the people money on the camera watch. And in Panama, they don't know how enjoying life and they say they can't bring him back. Uh, America went and, and bring Noriega, take Noriega, who the president in Panama and lock him up. <laughs> so I mean they can't get him if they want him. But, man, really, really. Good different strokes for different folks? No, 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 no. No, but the, 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 last, the, last, the last throw you know, that is bring the camel back is Robinson saying he going and, and mill a, a monument for Jean Myers when people starving in the ghetto, when he take the people cola. I hope Duke listening to this, when he take the people cola, when uh, the IMF come in, conditionalities and all kind of thing. In the IMF, you're dead, you know. This thing about ghetto, this thing about ghetto is not, Africans is not the people who was always in ghetto. The first people who were in ghetto is the Jews, you know. The Jews were the first people put in ghettos in Italy. So this ghetto is not something that is, we, we are, are used to ghettos. The richest man that ever lived in the world, ever lived, is Mansa Musa, the king of Mali. Mali is the capital, Mali was an empire, the Songa empire. I was in Mali. And I did the, the feature address in Mali. The first university in the world was in Timbuktu in Mali. When I finished speaking, I did the feature address. Farrakhan allowed me to do the feature address. The president at the time was Conte. Conte came and hugged me up. I could show you pictures of that problem. How you are Trinidad and so far off, knew the history that some of our own people know in Africa? Because you know. They just rip off Africa, take all the gold, all the mineral. The, the, the nuclear warhead is made with a cobalt. There's only one place in the world that cobalt and that is in Africa. How are they making all these nuclear warheads? Or with the, the Kimberley diamond might belong to the Queen in South Africa. She still have it. And, and, and these people fighting each other in South Africa. Where, the, what transfer? Nothing. It, where's the economic situation in South Africa? The blacks are still poor. They're living in the Bantu stand still. Same situation. But economically, the same thing. 400 years of slavery here, they pay me for no work, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and now you're telling me, do get your box rain to dry? And Mr. Morley, you come in to try to defend that? You uh, supporting Gary to defend a box drain that somebody get? The, the money is there only in the treasury? Mm -hmm. you, you acting as though, Mr. Prime Minister, they're leading you down a garden path. This is the last time I'm going to talk to you on publicly. They're setting you up. They're setting you up, Mr. Prime Minister. They said, yes, yeah, I tell you three times. They're setting you up, and you know why I, what I'm talking about. They're setting you up, and you're falling for the trap. You're falling in the trap. I hear you're making some public, public utterances. Pull back. Pull back. I hear a, a, a talk show host last night lambasting you, and you know who are talking back. Pull back from that rhetoric. That, that is not no power. The government and guns, that is no power. Nobody in faith, no government. The only power it have is the power of God. There are no other power. My mother made 14 children, and she grew up telling her God is love. The power, the, the power that is bringing them the heaven, the power that is bringing them God is love. The power is God. There are no other power. If all you think all you have so much power, I say, go and tell your wife that you go and marry a next woman. If all you have so much, Mr. Sabga, you have all the money, you go and tell your wife. And see if they ain't singing, you know, my God, today, the next day in, the fun in his funeral. You, Mr. Sabga, go and do it now, you, and you have power. Guy Griffith, you go and tell your wife that you go and marry a next woman. If, and all you have power, let me see how much power all you have. I have four wives. Four wives. Let me see. I say I is a powerful man because I have power. Uh, the power of love is the power of love I rule in with. I rule in with the power of love because that's the only power it have. There are no other power. Them other thing is temporary authority. That's why all those lost it. That's why all those died. There is no power. Power of love is the only power. That is the greatest power. All your nuclear weapons can't bring in the tide when it's gone out. Mm -hmm. All your nuclear weapons can carry out the tide when it's in. That's the tide we're talking about. That's just the sea we're talking about. When the sun going and set, you can't stop it with your guns, Mr. Rowley. The guns is nothing. The power of love is the real power. Challenge me with the power of love, and then we could talk. Don't challenge me with no guns. I ain't afraid of guns. Gun and bullet can't kill me. It's God had to kill me. If he says a gun and a bullet will die, is how we decide. But gun and bullet don't kill me, and gun and thing don't frighten me. You will frighten me with your guns, and you will frighten me with guns. All these people are nuclear weapons, and they can't, nobody can fire. Nobody cannot fire. 
America destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Them is the only people that had the hydrogen bombing. Now everybody have Kim Jong-un, Russia, China, Iran. Everybody have now. So fire yours now. America, Trump fire yours and you will find out what. Fire. Kim Jong-un say he his own on the desk. He will fire it. All you fire them nuclear. All you can do nothing with them nuclear weapons. All you can frighten me. Because I know all you went on no moon. I know all you did not kill Bin Laden. You know what people do when they kill an arch enemy? They just put your head on a stick and parade it. If they kill Bin Laden, you think they go throw Bin Laden body in the sea? They that kill Bin Laden by the Twin Towers and put their put the head on a stick and say, this is what will happen to anybody who try to blow down the towers again. They that parade Bin Laden body all over America. You would hold Ben Laden and they throw your body in the sea. Oh man. They went on the moon and all they asked them some rocks they show. No, it's not fooling people now. Tarzan and Mandrake and Phantom. Oh that is fantasy, you know, fantasy. And, you know, all Mr. Baker, I mean a lot of people have been chatting with and interviewing, have been going through a lot of poverty. You know, saying that they don't have any jobs, they've been applying all over for jobs, government entities and private. Is there anything you think the government should implement for underprivileged families, people that you know, can't help themselves. I just tell you, the government don't own nothing, you know. The government, members of the government get a job to, to run the affairs of the people. The government don't own nothing. The government don't own the treasury. Mm -hmm. The government is not, it is not their money. It's not Massey who making something or, or somebody, you know, you're in Japan, you're making a, a, a cell phone or you're making something. It's not that. Mm -hmm. We're making nothing. It's the oil and the gas and mostly the gas that we get all this money from. That belong to God. Mm -hmm. The oil and the gas belong to God. And that belong to the people, including the vagrant who don't get nothing. And then you're charging the vagrant tax. Mm -hmm. and, but I want to tell you where you're going to end up. No? I really want to tell you. But where you're you going? Man, it, 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 there are plenty of people where you're going. Right? There are plenty of people where you're going. I think yeah. we have come to the end of the program. Isn't well, it? thank you very much for, yeah, I, I just for inviting for me back again. Yeah, and to the, to the people you know, in Trinidad and Tobago, well, not to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, those people who they threaten to extinct, mm -hmm. you know, the people who they call in gangs and things, don't give up. Have faith. I still alive. Right, don't give up. And I tell you that the, the end is near, the end is real, real near. So don't give up. Don't lose heart. Don't kill your women. Don't kill each other. Forget the drugs, you know. Dying will do nothing for you, right? I just tell you how to get out of the ghetto. Mm -hmm. Get higher education and teach others. Yeah. And you're out of the ghetto. One time, one time, one time. G-H-E-T-T-O, I just spell it for you. If you get higher education, you're out of the ghetto. And I tell you where's higher education. Higher education, not PhD. Higher education is the consciousness of God. Get some God consciousness. Don't kill your brother. Stop killing your sister. Somebody gone down a woman in Samoa yesterday. I almost renewed my life, you know. I was on the brink of relying because right now I stopped driving. I let them go ahead. Let them see if they could control this. Since 1992, we come out of jail. All you control it. They can't control nothing. They can't control nothing, right? So I dress back. And my men dress back. And they ain't going out there until I say. And I tell them, don't go out, don't go out. Let them control it. Let me see how they go do it. They forget what happened in South Africa. In South Africa, the boys and them come for much years apart and they come to an end. So what are you so just trying saying? to snuff out all these Africans. You're making a joke. You can't snuff me out, Guy Griffith. You can't snuff. I alive, Gary. I ain't afraid you, and you know I ain't afraid you. That is not how nothing. I this is no threat. I, Mr. Alexander, I ain't afraid you. Mr. S uh, Mr. Prime Minister, I am afraid of you. I am not afraid. I am not afraid of none of you. I am already afraid of God, a hundred percent. So we are getting the percentage now to fear all you. I can't fear man. You know, everybody, all, all of you are going to die the same way. All, all men are going to die. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, you have to answer to your Lord. That is what my concern is. What are you going to tell God? That I was living here and I see all this oppression and I didn't do anything and I see them murdering women and I do anything. I'm going to tell my God, I say, no boss, you know, I have to do something because you tell me to do that. And it is written in the Quran, it is chapter 4, Surah Nisa. Men are the protectors of women. Yesterday when I heard the gun, this woman in Samoa, I almost, right now I'm driving again, right? I almost renew my life, you know, and come out and say, that is the end. Not the next woman I'm going to die. And then I hear this morning they kill um, Liti, San Manuel. Mm -hmm. They mad, they mad. But I, I, this is part of it. But uh, you know, I, I, it could stop. God could stop it. Easy, 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 easy. God will do anything easy, easy. God will do anything easy. 
Nothing is different. In the Quran, it says when God wants to do something, He say kun fire kun. It means in Arabic, be and it is. God wants to go to no set of things. All He has to do is say, that is that. And you know who to get to do it? You know, God could just take anybody and say, do that. And He had to do it. If God tell me tomorrow morning, do that, I will back. I have no choice. I have to do that. Consequences don't matter. Right? They don't matter. Because uh, my wives that I love, I will mm -hmm. meet them in paradise. Mm -hmm. So they think that I will lose my wife, I ain't going to see them again and my children. Nah. I obey God. All I will do is have to obey God and I, I save. That is my insurance company. That is when I go draw. Right? I go draw my pension when I meet my Lord. Right now here, this pension is nothing because you will spend the money we will get. Right? Mm -hmm. But when I meet my Lord is when I will draw my pension. And what, what you could say about me and Trinidad and Tobago? I, I, I have no criminal record. I have never been uh, I mean, charged for anything, robbing a bank, stealing, no, nothing on towards. I spent 10 years in the police service. Mm -hmm. I've done my national mm -hmm. duty. I have done what I'm supposed to do. If you understand, as a patriot, I fought for my country because I live it. I love it more than, uh, than you who say you love it. Listen, if a woman had two men tracking she, and a bad man come and say, listen, I want a woman. And, and one of the men who fight for the man is the weaker of the two. When the fight done, the woman going with the man who fight for she, you know, although the next man was, was the bigger man. Because, but the man who fought for the woman and the honor, even though he get beaten, is the woman, the man she go choose, you know. Not so? Yes, you woman, you know the right. So this is my country and I fight for it because I love it more than them. So unless you fight for your country, you can't love it all. Where do Quran do? You fight. I make you a prime minister with nothing. I use an Indian as an African. I say, I choose you above the African. No racism. No race. That is not part of me. And you look at the composition of my family, you know, I we go on. Love we have no barrier. Love we have no race. Love we have no tribe. Love we have no love we have none of that. Love is just the power that, that moves the world around. Love love is the most powerful of everything. Right? I want to keep telling you about that because I have four wives already, mm -hmm. so you are to get a husband to love Mr. you. Mr. Vaka, I want to ask you another question before yeah. we close off, though. I know you mentioned that back in 1990, you had the crime and stuff under control. Now that you're seeing what's happening now as a leader of the Jamaat al Muslimin, yeah. do you think it's right that you should come out and at least. No, I know I did too. No, no, I ain't right, ain't right at all. I dress back. And my men dress back. We're not involved. But you're seeing, I mean, women being murdered each other. Yes, other yes, day, yes, yes. And, it's and yesterday, wrong, no, but do you think no, you no, should no, really step forward and yes, help the commission give them advice? Yesterday, I almost renew my license, right? I almost come out when I hear this woman was just gone down in someone just like that. Mm -hmm. I was on the brink of coming out. But I say, nah, I ain't get no command yet. I ain't gonna have to wait for the command of God. I can't just move just on my own. I have to wait until I get the command of God before I move. I can move on my own. I Do you think that command of God is going to come very soon? Well, the way things are going, yeah. If the way things are going, so, well, I don't know who it's coming to, but the way things are going, something had to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, 300 murders in, killed in, in 205 days. This is, uh, this, this is a banana republic, they are CKA, not in my banana, a banana is a big thing. Right. They are CKA republic or a silk fig republic, a little small one, mm -hmm. Chiquito, they just call it republic, yeah? Eh, what are you doing? And they're making jokes, man. Look at all these people who get killed in train. That is a small country like train. That what all these people get killed, including a woman this morning who I know as a child. Tea. I mean, that dying right, dying right. But if you have ideas doing how to curb the crime situation in the country right now, mm -hmm. right now, do you don't think it's right for you, or you don't think you should at least, as a respectable individual, to share some of these advice with the commissioner? To, you know, to sort of bring down the high crime levels in the country. Listen, I am. You seem to be a man who a lot of people look up to and respect. I and Mr. Guy Vivid have a cordial relationship, right? A very cordial relationship. Yeah. I, I respect him and he respects me. He know what I know that he know. If you're not saying, mm -hmm. I literally grew up with his mother and, uh, and my, but all his family. I know mm -hmm. them. We grew up in the same area. I know his mother very well. I know his aunt. I know. I know all this family. Like I said, we grew up in the same area, mm -hmm. right? So I don't think his approach to this, this task is the correct one. But that is not for me to decide. Mm -hmm. They made him the commissioner uh, a thing, but I tell him that it had a badder man than you who they say was bitches Randall Borough, and he dead in grief. The, the government ended up charging Boroughs before he died. The same government we killed people for. So 
Mr. Griffith, careful, careful, how are you going? And Mr. Alexander, I hear you talking about the bulletproof glass. Eh? You, sometimes you play yourself, sometimes I know how to deal with you, but I understand that you want to meet me in a debate and I, I would welcome you anytime you're ready, you know, Mr. Alexander. Anytime you want a debate on this issues, you could call me, I'm ready for you. I'm ready for anybody. Any, I'm ready to debate anybody in Trinidad and Tobago on any issue at all. Any issue at all. Any issue. Any politician, any leader, any religious, anybody, any, on any issue you want to debate, call me. I'm ready to debate with you because I show you're wrong. I show that you're wrong, and the statistics show that you're wrong. The statistics and the state of the country prove that you're wrong. Those of you who are leaders, that you're wrong. You're misleading your followers, and you, of course, by extension, you, 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 you mislead, you're misleading me. By extension, you're misleading the nation, right? Because where's all the people? It have a deafening silence on pasta coffee, mm -hmm. and, and the next one, pasta green tea, pasta cocoa, pasta bush tea, the, the uh, speech of the, it have a deafening silence from them on all these, these crime situations. So why you want to pull me out now? And I, you know, I the latest kid on the block, you know, I just come. They here for centuries, them inherit all the colonial churches and things like that. They inherited that, you know. I inherit this, 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 this. Uh, I, I am um, literally, I told you that every African Muslim and some Indians came from me, right? And in July 1990, it had 19 brave Indians who was with me, you know, who fought with me, you know, 19 Indians, you know, mm -hmm. brave Indians, you know, real men, you know. You could see, look at me, you see next to me on TTT was an Indian with a big long beard. People say, what this man doing there? Because he's a, a, a very prominent businessman, mm -hmm. but he had a conviction about what is right and what is wrong, and he followed me. I gave no money. He was a businessman. I didn't give no money to follow me. And the other 19, the other 18 Indians, I didn't give them no money to follow me. They, I didn't coerce them and promise them. Right? So these men came willingly to... Yeah, well, the, yes, they were part of the 114. 19 of them, real men, real Indians, real, real men. Not no submissive Indians. Real men, they, they sacrificed their life for what they believe is right. And mm -hmm. God preserved their life. All of them came back alive, or their life. And, and some of them is, is big successful businessmen now, but that would have shoes. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm not a businessman. I'm a poor, humble servant of God, and, and that is it. That is my business. I'm a servant of God. I tell you, my pension will come when I die. Mm -hmm. Then God will pay me my pension. So I ain't looking for no pension from the government. Whatever I, whatever I think I, I'm entitled to as a citizen of financial, give it to the poor. Yes. And even my pension from the police, I don't take it, give it to the poor. Ask them if I just come and take that. I don't take it. I don't want that. I, I, that is my moral high ground. Mm -hmm. My wife tell me, take the money and give it to the poor. Well, give it to the poor in any case. I don't, but I don't want to go and take it so your treasury is safe for me. You know that I am not going in your treasury because money that is my right, my entitlement, mm -hmm. because I don't work for it at the moment, I don't want it. I don't gamble, I, 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 I have no habits, I don't drink, I, don't, I love women, and I'm the defender of women. Other than that, I don't have no other habits, I, I don't drink, I don't gamble, I don't smoke, I don't be on boat ride, I have no habits. None, absolutely none. Nobody could say, they see the Imam here, they see the Imam here, see. all they could say that the Imam love women. Yeah, all great men love women, that is where God, God made a man and then he make a woman, which is Adam, and he make a woman, that is your companion. Look after the woman. So that is my job. And put it, God put it in the Quran, eh? protect the woman. Mm -hmm. So I really, these days, I tell you yesterday, I, I nearly, 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 nearly renewed my license because I was on a, a radio program, 90.1, and I heard they just gunned down some woman, in, some 47 year old woman. That's a big woman. What she do to make somebody, you know, to, to gun her down? That is a mother of children and things like that. Who we could, what a woman could do to me? And me? What a woman could do to me except love me? A woman can't do nothing to me. I need a man. I am a man. What a woman could do to me? I mean, if a woman, you are in a relationship with a woman and she decides to sever the relationship, that is her right. Mm -hmm. She has a right to sever the relationship because she came into it voluntarily. She should be able to leave voluntarily. You don't own her life. Right? But a man, uh, if I can have you, nobody else can have you. They matter what? They, okay, they say there's some mad people walking about. Saying, yeah, mad people that the women and the, no. Uh, they, no, but it's a problem. I have a problem these days with the women. Uh, but I, with the men, eventually they will understand that all rivers will flow to the sea. Once they realize that, 
everything the problem solved, right? Yeah. Because the seagull is going to level everything, right? And then, and the level the playing field too. And then, uh, once they get up in the morning and they were like, well, wait now, it, it's more we than them. It's 41 politicians, 1.3 million of people. It's more we than them. Problem solved, you know. You see, there are no big mathematics. There are no big mathematics. So, threatening people with guns, and, eh, what gun? Eh, guns could do something. I want to thank you so much for joining thank us here at very PSA much, TV, very much. Mr. Yes. Baka. Yes. It was thank a pleasure you of much. you coming here today. And just recapping on the 1990 coup. Yes. So we have come yes. to the end of the program here at PSA TV. And I, want, I to want to say thanks to Mr. Juke. Yes, for he's actually locked and, on this morning. And you, yeah, Mr. Juke. Uh, and Mr. Juke is one of the good leaders mm -hmm. because I think he inspires people. Yes. He, I, I don't think he, he, people follow him because he's manipulating people, holding a big stick over their head, and if you don't do that, you're going to I think he, he has the ability to inspire people. Mm -hmm. That's a good leader, right? I, I just inspire people by my humility, I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think, uh, if I'm arrogant, I beg God's forgiveness for that, but rub it off quick. But I think one of the reasons to, 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 to inspire people is to be humble and not to be arrogant. You can't bring when the heaven asunder. You can't bring down the heavens. What keeping up the heavens? Nothing keeping up the heavens but God. Mm -hmm. What you could do about that? You can do nothing about that. God is in charge all the time. But you know, uh, uh, the sun does run its course. And every day, God just shows us the phenomenon that the night does overtake the day and the day does overtake. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing, nothing. So this too will pass. All these things that happen here, you know, all that will pass. And when, when you see the ghetto just now, were you calling the ghetto? I just tell you already. Yeah. I, I give you the, the recipe to get out of the ghetto, you know. Get, mm -hmm. the, once the consciousness, the God consciousness, which is the higher education, comes in the ghetto and they teach other, problem solved overnight. There is not ways offered to solve the problem. You know, what is offered is there are guns and who have guns and who have bigger guns and who are more bad. Arrogance, 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 and guns are no power. Like I say, all the guns that they have, amalgamated security is owned by, you know, some people in Westmore and all that. There are plenty of guns, you know. Yeah, but none of them can go and tell the wife you want to marry an ex-woman. They can't do that. They are no, they, they love, the power of love. They have that, they can't do that. I have four wives, four wives, so, and I have no money to so, so I, I of course, I am bribing them with money or nothing at all. It's just the power of love. Thank you yeah. so much, Mr. Baker. You're so welcome. we have come to the end thank of the program here on PSA TV. I'm Avalon Williams, and I want to thank Mr. Yasin Abubakar. He's the leader of the Jamaat al Muslimin. Thanks for coming again with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So yeah. we're going to toss the news. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks again. Thanks, brothers. <laughs>